Hi, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel for the first time, Lemony Fizz, where creative ideas just bubble over. Uh, today, we are going to discuss adhesives, just because they're pretty much, not to sound cliche, but that's kind of what holds your paper crafting together. And in this case, we're going to discuss all of the different ways and different glues that you could be using to hold things together. Uh, and we're going to start with little things first and then work our way up to some bigger stuff and some like 3d edges because if you are a serious paper crafter most likely you're building things that have edges that come together or um, are going to have a little bit of pressure on them to be pulled apart and because of all the things that are included in that project and we're going to go through and test which ones of these uh, dispense the easiest, have the best tips, and um, actually hold things the best. So to start with, I think we will uh, probably grab, we'll just work our way from left to right here. So I'm going to stack these out of the way, and we're going to do some sticky notes, keep some scores, and just kind of play with some glue. So the first one we're going to do, and I already got one of these open, so I'm going to use it first is the scotch tacky glue and we're going to pull out the scotch tacky glue sticky note and we'll probably do this one and then we'll just do um one of these uh, these are lawn fawn like little sentiments that are super thin and most likely if i were to do these a lot i probably wouldn't even use glue i've got some of this craft perfect double-sided tissue tape that i'm going to try using with those next but we're not there yet so I'll get back to you on that one. Um, so in this case, we're just going to do something really thin. These are some die cuts that I made from Doodlebug stamps and uh, die cuts. And originally I was going to foam dot them, but there isn't really enough um, like space for them to foam dot, if that makes sense. Like I, I'd have to really trim a foam dot down to be able to use it. So I went ahead and decided to use them for this gluing um, review anyway. So the first thing that you'll notice about this Scotch Tacky Glue is it's really thick and it's got this tip that you can slice and kind of make it a little angular or thinner. But if you do that, the glue is not going to come out very well and it does not come out easily. So you would have to probably water it down if you wanted to use it in one of those, um, like you can buy the little containers with the needle nose kind of tip that's similar to the one that's here on the Barely Arts glue. And, um, and Barely Arts actually, I think, sells those little bottles too that you can pour some of your bigger glue into so that you're using a smaller bottle. You could put this in there, but you would probably have to water it down. And once you get to the bottom of this, you're going to have to store it upside down or beat the crap out of it to try to get glue to come out of it. So for little pieces, probably not ideal. Um, we're going to go ahead and we'll do one of these uh, slimline things here first and see what we think about that. But I can tell right now it's going to be messy and I'm not going to get even coverage because it's just too thick. And if I squeeze too hard, I'm going to end up with too much coming out. And the other thing is this one's been used quite a bit. Like I've done quite a few crafts with it. And so it's not, it's not empty by any means, but it's not full anymore. And so it's making it even more difficult for it to get out. I probably won't even finish this stack just because it's going to be too frustrating and I don't want to keep using it. So as far as little things, this is a not so great score. Just because, one, it's too thick, and two, you can't really get precision with it. And I just wanted to see how well it would work for stacking die cuts and how sticky it would be to hold those little pieces together. I do like how sticky that glue is, but that doesn't make up for its lack of flow. And I don't want to have to be a mad scientist and try to figure out ratios to water down my glue to be able to use it. I want to be able to pick up the glue and just start crafting. Okay, so as far as like sticking, it does pretty well. Also, and I've noticed this when I do larger crafts too, it is pretty messy. 
and you do get um, like it doesn't it takes it a while to dry clear and you kind of get those little chunks on the edge I'd probably only recommend this one for bigger stuff but we'll get to the bigger stuff later so for little pieces I'm probably going to give it a 5 out of 10. I would, it'd be my last resort to pick up. Same with fine things. And I'll just put that down here like fine die cuts. 5 out of 10. And that's being generous. I would probably even go so low as to say a 3. Uh, you can find that glue. This It's the Scotch Tacky Glue. You can find it at Michael's or Joanne's. Um, most craft stores like big box ones like that i'd imagine that's the other thing this lid here it starts to like fill up with extra glue and so you have to clean that out every now and then because otherwise your glue doesn't go back on all the way and then you um that just dries out down inside there so you spend more time cleaning it out than you will crafting so i'm going to store this one upside down so it's ready to go for our next test i'll just stick it over here on the side somewhere okay so we'll just keep working our way around this sticking out pile the next one is going to be the recollections and I have never used this one. It has a glue tip similar to like Elmer's glue um, and it wasn't sealed. So when I just click, when I just opened it or twisted it for the first time, I heard it kind of like suck in air and it looks like you can adjust for how thick or thin you want that flow to come out. So I'm just going to tip it upside down and see what we get. Um, I'm going to open it more. And I'm squeezing pretty dang hard and it's not coming out. Oop, there it is. We're going to have to, so maybe this would be a good one to brush on. We're going to need a scrap pile just to wipe glue off on. Um, okay, well, it didn't want to come out. And when it does, it does. And it looks like I forgot to cut a piece out of that. Um, hold on, I've got a rag. We're going to lose pieces in the process. Okay. I'm going to just dip to finish. It's pretty liquidy as far as like where it fell on that sticky note. The other thing with little pieces is you want it to be able to like grab pretty quick because you don't want to be messing around with that. It looks like I can pull it up and reposition it pretty well, but it's not sliding. So that's probably a good thing. I'll try this again. Yeah, it's pulling up. And it's going back down pretty well. We'll have to see how well it sticks later. Um, I'm not super happy with how hard I had to squeeze just to get it going. But now that it's going, maybe. Let's try. We'll add to this so joyful here. I just figured I'd do a bunch of these because I'll be using them on cards anyway. And then I can just put some pattern paper on the top and make them a little thicker. Um, the tip is kind of hard to control. So for little stuff, it's going to be messy. Um, I can't tell how much is coming out all at once. Until it's coming out all the way. <laughs> so as far as like getting a nice thin line, this tip is not for that. It's pretty spreadable. So I guess if we were going to... Like if you wanted to paint it on with a paintbrush or something, that might be a good technique. Personally, I just want to be able to use my glue. I don't want to have to grab other tools to do it. And this one, I feel like I'm not very clean crafter anyway, and this is making me really messy. I'm going to have to like pause and go wash my hands and start over. And I don't like the way that it's getting on all the front of all my stuff because it is so messy when I'm trying to do detailed work. Um, so for the way it comes also for flow and just mess ability, I'm probably going to give this one even less than it's not staying stuck very well either. And it just pretty much made that nasty. That one's a two out of 10 on that one. Okay. And all these will be, um, like I'm going to have this whole post on my blog too. So if you need to reference it and I'm going to make a chart so that you can go back and check it if you want to. But that was, yeah, that one's ew. Um, those are all the eyes. I'm going to move those, all my little dots. 
think that's what that mess is too. Yep. Okay, so that was the Recollections Express glue. Not impressed. Um, put that over there. And then let's do the art art glue or art glitter. I've heard really good things about this one. I don't know about um I'm not sure how you're supposed to open it the first time because this twists. Oh, it twists off. Okay. So this twists off and then I don't think it's sealed in there. Yep, it is. So it's got a seal so it shouldn't be drying out on you. I'm going to smear some of that back in there. It's kind of thick right there at the opening. Let's see how well it comes out. Oh, that one's a little bit easier and quicker. I didn't really have to squeeze much. I'll try to pick some of that back up. Um, I brought the tool and I remember to use it. I can push stuff around and pick it up. Okay, let's swipe that through there. It looks like maybe it dries pretty quick. All of these also are archival safe, um, so they should be a pH, like a PVA or a, a pH neutral glue. Um, I really, really used to like the, I think it was just called scrappy glue and it was a PVH or a PVA glue, sorry, that I used years ago and it dried super quick and would actually like pull the fibers of your project. But I really just liked how fast it was. And it seems like this glitter one is that fast and that is like stuck down. So be precise before you stick it down because it's going to stay down. And I really like that just because when I'm working with like the 3D edges and stuff, I want my project to be secure. I don't want to sit there forever and hold it. And I do like, like it's really, it's coming out super easy. I'm going to have to grab these again. Maybe a little too easy because you can't get that fine line, but I would be willing to buy the little bottles to put that in if it's going to stay stuck as well as it looks like it's going to. And it is, look, it's not, like, here's a little bit of wiggle room. Like, this piece, as soon as I stuck it down, it's good. It's stuck. I like that one. Um, going to have to put it in another bottle if you want a thinner line. But as far as, like, instant grab and everything, very nice. So, I want to say 9 out of 10. I liked that one. Oh, let's do the, let's try it with this. It's probably not going to be as good. We might have to bump that down to an 8 out of 10. Yeah, because it's not going to come out as thin. But because it's kind of thin, it's kind of staying on the paper and I can just kind of manipulate it. I'm barely squeezing and getting a line of glue out of there. But it's also kind of like moving with the lid if that or with the tip, if that makes sense. Like I can squeeze just a tad and then drag the tip and it kind of just follows the tip. So, so far it doesn't look like it's going to be as messy. Let's see how it goes together when we've got a lot of pieces glued. We might be changing our, our rating. I got a little ahead of myself. It was just so fun that it went down so well. Actually, that's pretty cool. It's pretty neat. As far as like cleanliness neat, it's, um, it goes where you want it. It stays stuck. There's a little bit of overflow, but that was kind of the way I put it on. I'd imagine if I had a better tip, like if it were in one of those glue bottles, it would probably be delightful. Um, I expected this process to be pretty messy. This one's not too terrible. I don't know how well it wipes out of those corners. It looks like it wipes pretty well. It's actually kind of even sticking to my tweezers. Yeah, I like that one. I'm keeping it the, the 9 out of 10. It's, it's already stuck. It's already dry, like not dry. Like you can kind of still feel the moisture in it, but it's not terrible. But it did a really good job. And uh, nothing's going to be moving. It doesn't look like it's warping too bad. I mean, that was a lot of glue for such a little piece. So I'm fairly impressed with that one. I'm leaving that one 9 out of 10. Okay. 
and clean up some of that glue mess. Put the lid on this. We'll see how well they like seal themselves too. Like if I have to clean that nozzle out again or not. Okay. Beverly Arts is next in my line. So we'll just grab this sticking out. And I ran out of houses. But I've got this little tombstone that's going to work just as well. Um, I've been using this Barely Arts also. I've been using this since January and I have done a ton of crafting and it feels like it's probably only like right to there as far as empty. And I mean, I've done a ton of stuff. My only issue is I have misplaced the green part that goes on here to close it back up. And I usually just keep this needle in there and every now and then it, it will kind of seal up around the needle, but it's not very hard to clean out. That's, that's trivial. And it's my own fault for losing the piece that's, and I'm kind of lazy. I don't like to t unscrew this piece and put the other green one back on. I do love how fine of a line you can get with this Barely Arts to come out of the nozzle. And I will say it does grip fast enough for my liking. Like if it was a, if it was this nozzle and the grip of that art glitter glue, I think I'd be in heaven. So I might have to get those little containers with the other nozzle and give that a go. But these, yeah, it sticks pretty quick. I've pulled it up a few times and when I, like, because I've messed things up. And when I do, it does pull the fiber. So I know that it's sinking into that paper weave really well. Um, I do really like Barely Arts also. So um, let's just finish this up with this one. And I had an issue with this one where the Y came off. So we're going to use, that's kind of serendipitous that it comes to this one to finish it because I'm going to be able to get that nice fine line. I didn't even plan that. Hopefully I'm not out of screen there. So I tore off that Y a little bit when I was cutting it out of the die cut machine. I'm going to do this on the front. And if you've watched any of my other crafting videos or my paper craft videos, especially the last, last Halloween challenge where we stacked a bunch of paper for um, shaker cards, you know that this comes out nice and fine and thin. And I've done this quite a bit with all of those um, stacked papers that I was going to use for my shaker cards. This one's just a little bit more fine detail. I kind of wanted to give it a test as far as intricacy. because there's nothing worse than trying to do something that's intricate and having more of the project stick to your fingers than it does to your paper or to what you're, it is that you want it to stick to. And then all of those little glue shavings. I fight those all the time too. They end up looking like eraser shavings, but it's just little pieces of glue that have dried and then flaked off. This one's not terrible. It's not sticking as fast as the um, glitter art glue did. But it still does a pretty good job. I'm going to say I like the glitter art glue a little bit more. So we're going to do an 8 out of 10. These are just subjective. My choice, my numbers. Um, obviously, you would want to play with it yourself and see how you feel. But I'm doing this so that you don't have to have 5 or 10 different types of glue laying around. We can get a general idea of which one's going to fit most of your paper crafting needs. Um, but you've got to take your style into consideration too. If you don't, if you're not going to do little fine artwork or like pieces like this, you obviously wouldn't need a finer tip or something that's going to stick a little bit faster. If you were going to do, and if you're okay with, you know, larger pieces and you want a larger nozzle, then obviously that glue would be just fine. Um, do what works for you and for your budget. Um, I pretty much just did an investment in glue. Okay, so the last one is going to be this Nouveau Deluxe, and I've heard, I've got to plug this, hold on, I've heard good things about this one too. Um, deluxe Adhesive Dry, Clear Drying Craft Glue, so we'll see just how well that goes. Oh, it's got a nice fine no nozzle also. I'm just going to do a test squeeze here on the side. It was already kind of coming out just from opening it. It looks pretty liquidy. Um, we'll see how well, how well it sticks and how messy I can get with it.
it doesn't take much of a squeeze to get it out either. Um, like I just barely touched the nozzle to the paper and it was kind of oozing out onto the paper. And you can see it's kind of bubbling there. The clouds kind of came in, so hopefully the lighting's still okay for you guys. Um, let's see, movability. I can kind of lift up that corner, but I don't think I stuck it down very well to begin with. Let's check this one. Yeah, so it gives you a little bit more wiggle time as far as bef before you, like, can't move anything. But, like, that one, it's already starting to pull up. Or, like, it's stuck enough that I would ruin the piece if I tried to pull it off. So maybe if it's a little bit thicker, you get a little bit more slide time. It's drying fairly fast, too. And they're not lying. It's pretty clear. So, so far, that one's good. Let's do... Let's do this trick-or-treat. I'm going to move some more of these little eye dots out of the way. Move that just so you can kind of see. Um, comes out. I'm not even touching it. It's just kind of flowing itself. That could be a little bit of an irritation just because it's coming out a little thicker than I would want. And I have a feeling based on the slide that it did on that house. It's not going to hold as fast as I want on these little things, and so it's going to turn into a little bit of a mess. And it doesn't follow its tip and drag as well as that art glitter did. Sticking to me. I kind of wanted to do this like I did this with the metal dies because I like the way that they have that edge and they kind of like suck each other into where they're supposed to be you don't have to fight to line them up like you do with a Cricut cut image or piece or word these ones just kind of they self-align when you're stacking pretty good it'll be interesting to see how clear those because I don't know if you can see it but you've got a glue halo on there It'll be interesting to see if that halo actually dries clear. And it's, I mean, I'm already all gluey, but that's to be expected from the size of a project that I just did. Like all these little detail pieces. But I want to see that halo disappear. So we're going to give this just a second. It looks like it's already kind of disappearing now. So that could be good. Um, and it's not... I noticed when I picked this up just from the way it was cut out, it was already kind of warpy. So that I don't, I'm not going to blame that on the glue. And it looks like I can straighten it pretty quick and easy. Okay, so let's give that a second to see if that halo goes away. Until then, I think a 7 out of 10. If I were to like stack them in order and I were buying again, I would buy just for the fine detailing and the little things. I would buy the art glitter first. That would be number one on my list. This would be number two, and this would be number three. Um, and bottom, bottom of the list would be that Recollections. Actually, bottom of my list is actually the Tombow glues. I don't know about you, but I can't do a Tombow glue without getting the entire bottle tacky. And I hate that when I go to pick it up for a new project and my fingers are clean, the bottle's already tacky, and I can't do anything clean after that. Um, Tombow's like bottom, bottom of my list. But for the five that we're doing right now, that recollections would be the bottom of my list. Okay, so that's for that test. The next test is gonna be for flat surfaces and um, it, like if you were doing a photo mount, but we're not gonna be doing a photo mount. We're gonna be doing it flat surfaces on the edges of box cards because the box card is actually gonna be our 3D test and our, and our edge test. So for this, I've got all of, I've got five box cards cut and ready to go. They're different box card templates. And um, these are going to be available in the store when we're all done. So this will also probably end up being the tutorial video of how to put these box cards, each one together, because they are each a different style. But for this purpose, they're just for the gluing. So right now, we're just going to figure out where these sides go and glue this as if it were a flat paper. Um, we've also got a small paper, like a thin paper test to do. But that's going to be a different, I was going to do it with pattern paper, but I don't have any thin pattern papers. So our pattern paper test is going to end up being um, 
or a thin paper is going to end up being some like card sentiments. But we'll do that in a minute. So let's start. We'll just grab our stickies for flat photos. And it looks like art glitter is number one on our list just if we follow the sticky notes. So I'm going to always forget how to pull that thing off. Okay. So I'm just going to run a line of glue right here because I want to put this backing on. And if you're watching this for the tutorial for these actual box cards, the, um, this SVG comes with three different versions for this back piece. You can do the rounded, you can do a heart, or you can do, I think it's a circle. So there was a rounded rectangle. Maybe it's just a rectangle or like a rounded edged rectangle. Okay, so it, I'm just trying to use the bare minimum because I know that when I get to the Barely Arts, it's going to come out thin and I want these to come out as thin as I possibly can. I barely squeeze to get that amount of glue out of there. And I want, scientifically, I want it to be as close to the same amount of glue on each one as I can so that we can see which one's more um, watery and actually causes warping. Um, I think... Not sure what I was thinking on this one. I might have messed up on that. There should be a back piece here for sure. And then but this isn't, I think this goes with a different card because these should be angled too. So that's going to be our flat piece for this one. I'll put this aside and then I'll figure out what's going on with those. We're going to come back to this for um, the 3D edges. I got to double check that file. I might have not finished it. Okay, so that's the flat piece. We're going to let that dry for a second and then we'll come back and check. I can tell right now it didn't, it didn't like spread out very well to hit this edge. Like I kind of rely on my glue to kind of squish to the edges and get the parts that I didn't place glue on. Like I want it to soak into the fabric and go out and I can feel that glue line right there when I rub my finger over it. You can't really see it, but you can feel it and it didn't go to those edges. So currently I'm going to say for flat stuff, this flat art glitter is going to be a 7 out of 10. We'll come back and check it in a minute after it dries for a second. Um, this is just going to be a regular box card with flaps. So it's going to have four panels all along the edges of the front and back. So we don't need this part. But you should be looking at the front and the back. This one should fold Let's see, I always end up doing this backwards to myself. This goes this way. And then that folds down and out. Okay. So this is the back side of this. This is the front side and they each get, let's do Scotch Tacky Glue. It's next on our list. And I have built plenty of box cards with this glue. Um, I will say for this process, other than the squeezability, which is not so great again, I gotta clean that lid out. The irritation with this too is then, even if you weren't being messy and then you have to clean out the nozzle, now you're gonna be messy. Plus you gotta dig all the junk out of this. And that's gonna have to happen frequently. I will say most of these clear glues, when they've got a cap like this, this ends up being an issue. And the PVA glue that I used to use used to do the exact same thing. And it's kind of just maintenance, which I get. But I think caps like this and this cap kind of prevent that. So it's just kind of a design. It's a design flaw. Um, I will say that even though this one has this cut nozzle, um, because of the thickness of the glue, you can get a pretty thin line out of that without having to squeeze very hard. Like I squeezed a little harder to get a thicker line there in the center, but you don't have to squeeze that hard to get that kind of line. And you can, you can go a little bit more thin and keep it drier. I mean, cause obviously it's still paper and you're adding moisture and with a liquid glue, less is less is better because you don't want to add that moisture I, I talk about that a lot too like i always fold my score lines before i do my gluing of my pattern paper because that moisture 
you can feel it sink into your paper and it will mess up your score lines because then they get a little gooey for lack of a better word. And you can feel it when you're trying to fold that score line. They just don't go as crisp. Okay. But I do, I really do like that scotch glue when it comes to gluing down flat pieces like that. And I, I haven't had any issues with like warping or getting too much glue out of it and not being able to control that flow and having it be nasty and warpy. It didn't go on that edge though. So overall, I would probably give that one an 8 out of 10. It's not perfect, but for a relatively inexpensive glue, it's not terrible. Like, I think, let's see if this one has it. It doesn't have a price sticker on it. I bought it at Michael's. I, I want to say it was either $7.99 or $9.99. My, my, my Michael's bill was a little shocking, and I didn't buy that many things. But um, it's relatively inexpensive for what you get and for how long it lasts. I've been using this bottle. I think I used it from August till December or January, and then that's when I bought the Barely Art glue, and it's done me well. So I'm going to do an 8 out of 10 on that one. We will go back and check on those once they're dry, too. Okay, so the next one is the Recollections. I'm scared to use this one on anything because I don't want to ruin it. Um, this one doesn't have much pattern paper, so let's do this. Um... put the panels away and then so this is the back and I wanted to glue this on the back inside so I'm not even going to do any gluing on the front of this panel yet okay so I've opened it about halfway you really got to get a good like I can't I don't know if you can tell but look how much my thumb is indenting in there and it's not coming out so I'm gonna open it just a little more and that's about where it wants to start flowing. I just I'm reminded of using Elmer's glue. You can't you can't really control the flow. You get what you get. <laughs> Which is funny because as a teacher you're always telling the kids don't use that much glue. Just a dab will do you. But now I kind of feel sorry for saying that because they were trying to dab, but it wasn't coming out very well. And then when it did, it was just a big old puddle. I'm sorry. Next time I'll get you better glue. Okay. Stickability. It's going to come up really easy. Like, I didn't pull like that on those other ones, but I knew they weren't going to come off. Like, it gets stuck, stuck. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Um, just not impressed. To me, it just, it's like a watery Elmer's glue version. Okay, but I don't think we ruined anything with that one. So at least the card is still usable. I'm going to be kind of skeptical to try to use it on other things. Actually, we're not doing anything major after that one. So, okay, recollections. It's still not getting a very good grade. I'd actually say because it pulls off pretty easy and it was kind of hard to control the flow, I'm going to do a 4 out of 10. Okay. I got this one and it is I'm trying to remember I think it's just a long box card so it's going to just have a back but the way that it's going to be in the file is you can either choose to have it just be the back and the front and make just a box with no background or you can choose the shape you want for your background so in this case I got to glue this cardstock square down and then this pattern paper and I'm going to start with this background first. Uh, we're on Barely Arts. This is my go-to, so I kind of already know what my flow and everything's going to look like. And because of that fine nozzle, that's why I did the little swirly, so I could just cover a little bit more area with it rather quickly. And I want that to be solid and then I'm going to run this along the back and I just do the same thing. I usually just kind of go right to the edge as close as I can get without going over and then I go, I just kind of swipe across with a thin layer and it really does not take much to get this to keep paper stuck where you want it. Okay, and then I'm just basically putting this piece of pattern paper down, one, because we're doing the, the flat lay photo test and two, when we actually do the box card it's going to be the back 
of this box card with the um with the design i'm not sure oh that was panel three i'm like why doesn't that reach because i kept the wrong panel out okay oops let's put the sticky on it barely obviously i like it i use it it was it was my top one it might be getting bumped but i don't know yet Okay, we are on to the last one, which is the Nouveau. Okay, so to glue this as far as, there's a lot of pattern paper here. Um, I think we can glue it all relatively quick. Those are all our panels. This one gets this. That's the front panel, but it goes, or no, that's panel three, I think. Oh yeah, it's, it just didn't pop out. Okay, so this one I'm gonna do on the back as a pattern for the background. I really do like this lid. I feel like it's not gonna get gooey in there and you're just gonna be ready to glue every single time you pick it up. But the, um, the art glitter, seems similar you're not gonna have to clean it out so this one is going to be determined by squish factor and how well it actually like smears out when you put it down and then holds if I remember correctly this one held pretty dang fast yeah and I like that I mean I know a lot of people like to be repositionable I like to just have it go down and be done and it is See, it's pulling fibers it's down and done i like that and i think it's squished pretty well to my edges yeah mm, that one as far as like a flat lay um let's do another piece but right now i'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. It's pretty clean too. Like I don't feel like I've gotten messy while I'm playing with it. Where does I think I put that? I made this the wrong size. Nope. I pulled the wrong thing. This one goes here. I gotta start paying attention to my numbers. Okay, so I had a little bit of slide there, which is good, but then once you've gotten it where you want it, it's not going anywhere. Like I'm not scooching it. Oh, there's a little scooch. I got I had to push pretty hard though. So you have a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. And then once it's down, it's down. Okay. Give it a second to dry. And then, like, you probably wouldn't need to mess with whatever you're making that much more than what we just did. I mean, unless you're like me and you've put the mustache on before you put the face on. But see how it's pulling the fibers of that? That's kind of what I like. I want to know that it's soaking in and it's going to be stuck there for life because that's why I build these things. I don't want the glue popping off in the next 30 days or when I go to pick up the card or, and I want my grandson to be able to pick it up and play with it and not worry about pieces falling off because then he's going to feel bad for touching it. And the point is for him to enjoy them too. So I think this one does its job well. It doesn't look like it's warping or anything either, like liquid wise. I mean, it's a liquid glue, but I don't think it's like so runny that it's having issues with um, warping my paper or making ridges, which the art glitter kind of made a ridge. That might have just been the way I put it on, but it didn't really smear when I put it down. Like I like when they smear a little bit that's what helps them sink into those fibers and I feel like the art glitter glue might have just stayed in its position it might be better for dimensional things and I need to reread on the bottle it might be what it's designed for permanent water-based non-toxic dries acid free it doesn't say yeah adheres to hard plastic metal feathers wood shells canvas so I think they kind of want it to like hold its shape 
So that might be why it doesn't like, once you put it down, it doesn't really smear and turn like sink into the fibers. They, they want it to kind of stay where it's been positioned. So it might be an unfair advantage for the art glitter. Like every, these ones are meant more for paper. They're meant to dry clear and smear, I guess. Okay, I liked that one a lot. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Okay, so that takes care of our flat lay. We're going to do some bling and we're going to do some 3D edges. And But before we do that, I think I've already got... Um, I got glue everywhere. I've got these ones prepped. So let's do these. And then I'm going to have to pause for a second and come back to do the bling because I didn't grab the bling. Okay. So these, I, I didn't have a very thin flat uh, pattern paper. And uh, most of my pattern papers are like a, the thicker, not quite cardstock texture, but really close. And I wanted something that was thinner just to see how bad the ridges were when we do it. Before we get started, my, my public service announcement for the day is um, if you're getting this kind of like chattery edge, see how it's got those little paper fibers sticking off? When you use your Fiskars slider cutter, it is time to change your blade. Um, I had not changed mine in a while. And when I did change that, like basically I was trying to cut these and I was getting all this chatter. And when I was sliding down to the paper or up to the paper, it was bolt. It was kind of like bunching up and getting jammed right on the edge of the cut so when it starts doing that it is time to change your blade these are really really thin card sentiment that came out of this hot off the press book uh, i don't even want to say how old this thing is <laughs> it was 4.99 um i i want to say this is like 13 years old maybe older uh, but basically it's just a bunch of card sentiments in there and there it's blank on the other side and you just cut out what you want and then you can add a little bit of color to it or ink it or tear it. This is back when like tearing was a big thing and distressing. So they've torn the edges and then they're just rubbing some paint on it. Walnut ink was a big thing back then. Um, inking the edges, chalking, a little bit of distressing like with water. Uh, nowadays you could probably use your Copics on it. It's really, really thin. It's like printer paper but you could still um, dress it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do some inking on the edges and I've already inked all the other ones in the pile just because this way they're ready to go when I'm ready to use them on a inside of a greeting card and I'm not just wasting the sentiments for the sake of our experimentation. Even though I was willing to waste them for that, I just figure I might as well do double duty and get some other stuff done. So we're gonna start with the Nouveau because that's first in our pile here. And I can... I don't know if those are still on screen they're just in the way okay so again i'm going to go to the edges kind of swirl across the center i want to see so i'm trying to do the same amount of ink or sorry um glue that i would do on no matter which dispenser i'm using here and i just for this one i want to see how bad it warps this thin paper or if it leaves the ridges underneath and then obviously movability just in case like for this instance you should still be able to slide just a little to get your edges lined up but then it should just be stuck down and i can feel my glue lines underneath there but that doesn't mean they're going to cause an issue i can kind of start to see them bubble there too so we'll just see how that goes we'll come back and check all these once they've dried a little bit as well as our box card flat lays Usually you can tell within the first minute or two though, and that one's got a pretty good glue bubble there. I can squish it around with my finger, but um, I think if I were to rate this one right off the bat, I would probably just say a 7 out of 10. You shouldn't be able to see your glue after it's been laid down. Uh, recollections, this one's going to be bad. Okay, a little bit more than medium for the opening. I'm learning that. So I don't have to press as hard. I'm trying to do an even flow and pattern just like the other one. I 
think I am going to have a little more movability with this. Um, if I were doing these sentiments more frequently, oh yeah, lots of movability. Like you're not going to want to bump it for a minute or two. Um, if I were doing these sentiments more regularly and using them in a pack of cards or something that I was making, I would probably grab this double-sided tissue tape or use my tape runner on it or run it through the Xyron so that it had like that thick dry adhesive on the back of it and not a liquid adhesive. This was mostly just for the sake of our testing. It's got the bubbles too. Uh, it had a little bit more movability. When we first put it down, it looks like it's already kind of curling my black cardstock because of the liquid. The Nouveau, even though it had the bumps, didn't curl. So I'm going to say a 5 out of 10 for that one also, just because I don't want that curl. And it looks like I used Elmer's glue. I probably am being um, a little judgmental of it now, but it just, I can kind of already tell the quality that's going to come out of it. And I'm going to have to squeeze this one a little harder to kind of get a thicker line because it's really hard to get a thick line with this Barely Arts. Like I'm squeezing, squeezing. And that's more glue than I would have wanted to use anyway. But for the sake of fairness between, for like the amounts that we're putting on, it has to be comparable to the other two. Movability. We got a little bit of slide. That's a little crooked on that one. That's the way I cut it. That one sunk in pretty well. Like you can still see some of the liquid marks over here and I can see my lines. It'll be interesting to see what that one does when it's all dry. I don't think it's warping my paper. Well, this is the recollections. It's really warped, like bouncy warped. This one's a little warpy. The Nouveau, no warp at all. I might have been hasty in my seven. Let's change that to an eight. Um, because Barely Arts is going to get a seven out of ten. It's a little too liquidy for that thin of a paper and it's kind of warping it. Um, and then that's our recollections is it's going to be the guideline for the more most warpy that's a technical term okay scotch glue this one seals up on me every time i put it down and because it's thicker i had to kind of lay it on the table Oop, got a little much there um, because I couldn't hold this thin paper up and rub my glue across it. With the cardstock, like you can still hold it up in the air and kind of run your glue on it, and it's not a big deal. But that this thinner paper was just going to fold and go everywhere on me. It's already kind of wrinkly. I think for this thin, thin paper, we're going to see the lines for all of them. I don't see any of them not doing that. This one's really bubbly though and it's not quite as bad as the recollections but it's starting to curl with that liquid or with that moisture in it what do we give recollections where'd it go oh duh it's upside down five so maybe a six nah that those bubbles that's not pretty this one's more of a four out of ten Okay, and the last one is the art glitter glue. When I say art glitter glue, I want to play with like sickles glitter glue. I'm totally confused by this. <laughs> okay, comes out super fast and easy. Like it was hard to go less than that. Um, I'm not so sure I'm liking how fast it does come out, but I think it would probably work really, really well in one of those fine tip things. But because it is so fast and easy, look how liquidy it is. And you can already kind of see the, the way that it's colored that paper. It's got like that wet look to it. And my page or my cardstock instantly buckled. Three out of ten. I think that thin paper is going to be our moisture test too. Okay. So let's set these aside and 
let's go back and do our 3D edges and then I'll pause it and grab some bling. And then um, I don't think we even need to look at those ones now that they're drying. We'll get a chance to look at these ones as they dry though, or since they are dry now. Um, art glitter glue. This, this is going to be for our 3D test. And it is already, it's dry. For our photo mount, it is stuck. And I don't see any warping really. Like my paper has, it didn't really warp much. The, um, and there, those edges that I could feel before, they're gone. So we might have to up that to an eight. Okay, let's keep that there. Now we're going to do the test for how we put in our, um, in our panels and how well they stick in. So I'm just going to run this down the edge. I like to get right to the edges of my tabs. And then this should line up kind of top and bottom of this spot. And it already like kind of grabbed when I just did that. Which is probably going to be a good thing. I think I needed to go over just a little with that, but it's pretty good. Kind of coming out thicker than I wanted, so I'm just going to drag it across a little. It's it's gripping. It's a grippy one. This is our one. I think my panel's just a little too tall there. Okay. And this front is going to go on this way. And I'm not going to finish this, like, well, I guess I can. For the sake of time, I wasn't going to, I'm not going to finish this, um, this card, like the base card. I'll do that in a different video, but, um, so if you want to see how these card templates finish going together, we'll do, I'm going to finish that in a different video because then actually we can just do it. Let's just do it because this is going to be our test. Anyway, we want to see how well these fold and hold up. So for all of the box cards, when you're assembling them, I always do this side panel first, line them all up along this bottom edge. And then I fold this tab over after I've glued those three tabs. And then on this one, I'm going to put this front piece right here. And it should line up right there. And this is where that 3D test comes in. Like how well does this stick and hold? And how long do you have to hold it before you can actually move it? Because I got things to do and I got things to craft and I don't want to sit here holding a piece that I've glued all day long trying to wait for it to, to actually like dry and not wiggle off. And this one's not terrible, but it's not great. I felt like it held better when I was just doing those flat pieces. That one came a little too far to the front. It seems to be pretty stuck so far. It's I can feel the moisture in it and you can kind of see the moisture right there. But if it's any indication of what it did back here on this flat lay, it's probably going to just dry itself out and take care of itself. So I don't know. It's, I didn't have to hold very long and it's stuck stuck. Like it's not going to It's peeling fibers. If I start pulling, it's going to pull fibers. So I'm going to say that it's comparable to like the barely arts. Um, liquidy, it might be a little bit more liquidy and it comes out a little bit more fast. So as far as like three dimensional stuff, I would probably give it a seven. Uh, we want to say a seven or an eight, seven out of 10. That was my first instinct. Okay. So that's for that one. Next we've got, and that was the art glitter glue. This one is our scotch tacky glue. And we already know this one works pretty well for this kind of thing. Cause this is what I do or what I was using for my, my cards before. So here's the back 
and we are going to lay it down. I think did I, did I still did that wrong? No, I didn't. No, we're good. They all lay across here. Okay. When I don't have stuff on them, they look funny. I'm not sure what I'm doing with them here. Okay, so I'm going to run this along panel three. And then I did that on the wrong side, so I'm going to leave that glued for just a second. Panel three on the right side. And I'm just going to line it up with the top of my edge up here and this, this score line right here and press down. And then I'm going to open it up this direction and it should match up with that side over there. And I'm just going to leave that glue mask right there because we're getting ready to add some more. And then I always just kind of leave like about a paper width in between my two score things so that they have just a little bit of space between them. Between the edge of this panel and then this line, I just leave like about a paper width. And I'm still just lining up up here on the top, kind of making it straight. And then I'm opening them each up this direction. And then I'm just going to cover this with glue. I will say that where you can cut the tip of this, it kind of makes it easier to smear that glue as you're going. It's not probably ideal, but okay. And then I always fold this score line back so that I can kind of see the edge of my card. And then I'm just going to line up my top and bottom and this edge with that bottom edge panel. Everything should be nice and straight. Hopefully I didn't just mess that up because for some reason it feels weird, but I think it's because this one has the flaps on the sides and I'm not used to that. Yeah, we're good. Okay, and then we just have to glue this inside to this inside. So I usually just kind of squish and hold and hold those two edges. And the Barely Arts grabs pretty fast. Like, I don't have to spend forever holding this. I will say um, I have let the kids play with the boxes a couple times. And, and after being stored in like hot and cold and hot and cold, I have had a few of these edges pop off. But part of that was storage. And then the other part was just letting the kids play with it. So, and it could be that I just didn't glue very well. These actually stay better than when I use the, um, the score tape on the edges of, for these. So I, it could be that that one that popped apart was a score tape too. And it just looks like it was glue. I don't know. Okay. But there's the box card. Quick, easy. This one you can just, um, it's got flaps on the three sides and then you can add um, a back to it or like some, like a shape or whatever, because these are templates, then you just add your own things. The idea is um, you can use these to put die cuts on and then that way you, you just start with the base and then decorate it the way that you want to. So you can add die cuts, you can add different shapes that you've cut out with your Cricut. They're kind of a bake your own kind of thing. Okay, so that was the scotch. It's one that I use quite frequently. I actually kind of like for that. It's not too messy, so I'm going to do an 8 out of 10 on that one. The next one's the Nouveau. This one might be a little bit um, different to kind of put together. Can I just say I don't even want to put the Recollections one together because I'm afraid. <laughs> I think it's going to ruin it. Okay. This is the Nouveau one. I'm going to start with the panels and then we'll do the front. The front is meant to look like the front of an envelope. So it's going to be, um, it's, I'm going to have to do some puzzling because I haven't done this one on camera yet. Um, it's coming out nicely. I, this one you're lining up all on the bottom. Um, the glue is coming out really nice. It's pretty easy to control. It's it's not grabbing as quick as I would like. See how it's still got that little wiggle in play. When I'm doing 3D things like this, I like that instant grab. And I thought for some reason that it, it grabbed well for this. Maybe it's just the cardstock on cardstock. I don't know. Because we scored it well for grabbing with the pattern paper. Maybe it just sink into the fibers better. This might have like some kind of shell or something like kind of a, you know, like that, the way that the paper's made, it might have like a gloss or something on it that's not catching the glue as fast. 
I'm just going to pull and see. Yeah, see, it's not catching as fast as the pattern paper did. That's weird. Okay. Okay. And then this was the front, and I'm going to tuck it into this, like, yogi. And then this is going to go across the top to make it look like that folded envelope. So we need blue on here. And then I'm going to run glue on my three panels, so the three, two, one. And then I'm gonna then I'll like kind of let that sit for a second, and then I will tuck in and fold and glue this front panel. So I'm gonna fold this out of the way for just a second. Fold this over to grab those three. And then run the glue here. to grab this front panel. And I'm just making sure all my edges are lined up and the bottoms of my panels are lined up. And then this, I'm just gonna run the glue in this general area because I don't wanna put it on this piece and then have it touching that panel in the back. I need that for, for other stuff. This is probably a little bit backwards of how I would actually put it together if I were using die cuts, just because I would want to stack my die cuts to see where they go. But for this sake, we were doing the 3D build, and so I don't want those other like elements and embellishments getting in the way of our actual like design and thought process here. Not, it's stuck pretty well. It seems to be fairly sturdy. There was a little bit of slide and give there at the beginning, but it's not like it's holding well. It doesn't feel like it's overly um too moist like i'm not gonna use that word it doesn't feel like it, there's too much liquid in the glue or that it's that one slipped a little or that it's um warping my paper it's stuck stuck i'm like this one it slipped a little and now it's not going anywhere unless i want to pull some fibers of some papers which i don't so i'll just trim that because it's not going to be a big deal okay so i still like that one a lot i'm going to say a nine out of ten on that one I would have given it a 10 out of 10, but there was a little bit of slide on that cardstock, which makes me question it just a little bit. I just realized that's wiggling my camera every time. Hopefully it hasn't been too wiggly for you. I'm sorry. Um, different setup. Not used to it. Um, okay, so this is just a regular long box card, and we're doing this one with our Barely Arts. You can tell I'm holding that recollections off till the end. It's going to ruin my box. I might have to go back and re-glue it with something good. Okay, um, we need a three. And I'm gonna try to do as much glue as those other ones. It's just harder with that tip. A good coverage, that's kind of what we're going for. I feel like this Barely Arts gives it a good coverage without being like too overly glued, if that makes sense. Like it's not, it's not excessive and it's not too much. Let me two go. Two. And one. garage doors opening and the bird is upset okay we're at the end of this anyway so I'm just going to glue this back panel oh that normally goes on the inside and then this last piece Sure it is. I just did that backwards. It's okay. We're gonna do this and then we'll just tuck it in. So 
So obviously you can do this in two different ways. You can glue it over there first or glue it on this side and then tuck this in and that barely arts. It grabs pretty fast. Like I don't have to hold very long, which I really, really like. Okay, so then that's that 3D done, dusted. Definitely a 9 out of 10. Eh, let's say 10 out of 10. I still really like that one, and I like that it comes out thin and it's not super, I don't feel like it warps. There's not too much moisture in it. Okay, so then the next is our recollections. Set up this box card with the reflections glue. And it looks like because it's so liquidy, it's actually kind of curved this, um, the back panel of this box card. So I'm um, not hopeful for how this is going to turn out. Move that over there. And this one's just like the standard three, two, one. Oh, and I left the cap open just a little bit, so it kind of got crusty there. That's kind of nice, though. I just closed it, and it kind of pushed some of the gunk out and then made it usable. I'm going to line these up kind of towards the top like I always do along the sides. I don't think it's going to stick very fast just based on the other stuff we were gluing with it. Yeah, it's like, you can see that it's super slippery and slimy. It does not grip and hold very well. It's going to have to sit there for a minute before you can actually like mess with it, which means it's probably not going to hold very well as far as my edges. So I'm going to say this is probably even a lower score when it comes to doing stuff that's 3D or that's going to have a little bit of um, tension on it. Like the inside folds of this box card. Okay, so then we'll run it out here. I'm just going to let it sit while we do that because it's already kind of wiggly. But any other glue, I would have just moved onto these panels right away. So I'm going to do the same with this, and then we'll just see how messy it is. Okay, so then I take this front panel, line it up with the bottom, and my seams, or this, like, score line with that flat edge. Yeah, see how my boxy, my, all my pieces are kind of po poking out the top because it's shifting and moving on me. So any of those other glues, like that would have been enough time right there for them to, to be stuck. And it looks like it's decently stuck, but I'm not going to trust it. Let's see how it goes with these inside flaps. Like this is already trying to pull away. See right there? And it's not sinking into the fibers. Like it'd be one thing if it was trying to pull away, but it was kind of pulling some fibers with it. Because that would mean I was pulling on it pretty hard. I'm not pulling on it hard and it's not staying. I'll probably have to go back and redo these with one of the other glues just to be able to make this box functional. And this would be one of those ones where I'm going to have to sit and hold forever for a glue to, or like for this edge to actually hold up. See how it keeps pulling away on me? Yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to let it. I'm going to just open it. Oh, that's kind of decent. It, it kind of stuck right there. Maybe it's one of those ones you got to kind of like spread and give it some air time to dry. Nah, I'm going to leave it. I don't want to waste the, the, the box card. And where it is right now, it's still salvageable. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. And I'm actually going to say for 3D, a 1 out of 10. Okay, so that is all those. Um... I don't really have anything. I was going to do the, the bling practice, and I don't know. I don't really have anything that I'm ready to bling yet. So I'm thinking we'll just do a piece of bling on each of these with the corresponding glue and then um, give it a minute and then try to pull it off. And then later I can always just pop them off and use them on something else. That way, soon. You can get all those in camera. Okay. So I'm just going to dump a few of these out. And the first one is the Scotch Tacky Glue, which, where did they use? Well, here we go. So I'm just going to put a dot of that. 
Oops, that's a big dot. And set a piece of that. Oh, I think, I think I have those upside down. And then the recollections. I keep putting these in upside down. They're easier to pick up upside down. And the art glitter. I don't know if they're supposed to be with the rounded side up or down. I like the white shimmery part, so I was thinking the other way, but there really isn't much mass for it to catch right there, so... And then the Nouveau. The test on this one too will be whether or not they actually dry clear around the edges of this bling. Oops. And the last one is the Barely Arts. Okay, so we'll just give these a few minutes to dry and then we will discuss how well they stuck. I didn't use as much on the Barely Arts as the others, but it's just easier to not have as much squeeze out, like the art glitter and all those come out pretty quick. Okay, so we will give this a minute to dry, and then we will check back and see how it went. All right, let's check our rhinestones and just see how well these worked. I'm just going to use this and double check that it's stuck and how clear the, the glue is on the outside. So there's a little bit of a shimmer here, but it's it's nice and stuck um, on the recollections there's not as much glue showing as I thought there would be you can kind of see where it sunk into the paper but it didn't hold the bling very well at all so we're gonna do a zero out of ten on that one the scotch it's stuck and there's not much you can see I mean you can kind of see a little halo of the glue so I'm gonna do an eight out of ten because you want it to stick and the halo is not really surprising. The art glitter, you can really see the halo. Like it dried clear, but there's a lot of glue. That could just be the way I did it too. But I mean, it's stuck, stuck. It's not going anywhere. Now uh, let's do a 8 out of 10 on that one also, just because there is a lot of glue that just didn't soak into the paper. The Nouveau stuck stuck and there's not really like I can see a little bit of glue that's popping out the side there but not much it could be that I used too much glue on the art glitter and just the right amount on the Nouveau so I don't know that's we'll just be fair and give it the same and then the barely arts I know I only used a little bit on this one and it is stuck stuck um Actually, I'm going to say a 9 out of 10 on both of these. That one, I think, is my fault with the with the blop of glue. And this one, I'm going to say the same, 9 out of 10. So these three, Art Glitter, Nouveau, and Barely Arts, are really good for the bling. Recollections, not at all. Zero. And then the Scotch Glue, good. Actually, I should probably change that one to 9 out of 10 also. It could even be a 10 out of 10. I mean, <laughs> that's the teacher in me. You, you, nobody gets a perfect, but it's, it's pretty dang perfect. All of them are clear. Um, this one, you can just kind of see the halo. This one, obviously, you can see the glue. That I'm going to say that was my fault. And these two with just a little amount, these, these are pretty dang perfect. Actually, we'll probably change this one to a 10 and this one to a 10. So in order, those two, then the art glitter and the scotch. Okay. So I think we pretty much covered everything we could possibly be doing with a liquid glue. And um, I'm going to go ahead and create a little chart for you. You can grab that in the blog post on my website, which is lemonyfizz.com. Be sure and check out the shop. These box card templates will be in the shop. And um, hit like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. See if I can grow my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.